might recall me a couple of blogs back mentioning that I was out of inputs on the Bodner boards so I was going to have to make compromises with some of the buttons. Well that's kind of got worse because I've more or less decided as I was saying to use a rotary control for the rudder trim so that's three more buttons and I was already short of about three or four inputs and I've also discovered some extra functions that I need for example the wing fuel tanks which I didn't know about well I kind of knew about it and didn't think that was implemented but so I've got another two toggle switches and of course going back to my problems with the ADF radio if I want to add another dual concentric for the ADF tuning that's another five inputs and so on so anyway to cut a long story short I've decided to go for another yet another board in a board so that'll be six boards so once I decided to do that I went ahead and made another panel and <laughs> so here it is now there's a few interesting things to say about this panel I already had this I already made this earlier it, it was uh, it's made out of MDF it's not an acrylic panel and it was basically just a blank panel with that sticky backed plastic on and it fits around the trim rudder uh, sorry the um, elevated trim control and it fits next to the oh, I can't I can't show you that it's wired up now <laughs> it fits next to the lower console so what I've done is I've I've made this uh, up and what I've got on here well I've got the ADF tuning function on here and what I've done is I've also duplicated three of the buttons from the ADF control panel that's the flight time elapsed time set reset and also the FRQ frequency button. So, so that allows me to manipulate those ADF tuning controls whether I'm using the timer. I can swap back and forwards between the timer functionality and the frequency tuning. So that's what that's going to do. That's, that's a dummy that's going to be a dual concentric knob. At the moment that's just a regular, concent a regular encoder. Then I've got a control lock function. It's not very realistic but it's have on, a, on a toggle switch there got the wing tank fuel boosters and I've got gear up and down for the amphibious versions and along the top here I've just got four extra push buttons the idea for those is just calling up the things like the checklist and the view changing page which I'm not going to use but um, but for other aircraft as well it's you know you can map the shift one two three four j just panel selectors onto those buttons or, or something else you know it was just really I was searching for something to put on there to make it look kind of nice and and how I've done the surface of this I've done this this is an experiment really I mean it looks okay from a distance close up it's a bit you know it's not great it's actually just paper laminated with uh, if you've got a laminator I printed the stuff as I as I did before and just um, laminated it with a I think this is a 250 micron well actually it's 125 because what I did was I, I laminated the graphic with a piece of paper back to back and then split the split the thing apart so it's half laminated I can't remember why I did that it was a pretty dumb idea actually if I'd, fu if I'd fully laminated it and left it fully laminated it would have been a bit stiffer I mean the problem at the moment is at the edges it's a little bit flimsy so if you're going to do this keep that in mind and think think of a way uh, either to make it stiffer or to bind the edges the other thing is it's really you know compared to the acrylic I mean you can't have it both ways it's very easy to work with in some ways you know but it's a little bit more fragile should we say so you can't really drill through this you've got to cut all the holes out with a knife a sharp knife and it tears easily so but once it's once it's together it looks pretty good I mean we'll see and, you know, and I've got color on here as well of course this will never be backlit it's impossible to make this backlit but um, you know that's not really going to be a problem so I've got to wire this up obviously when the next board comes I was talking about getting some lights for the for the panels got a couple of these 
These are um, just exactly what I, I said they were going to be. They're on bendy stalks, just a little LED light. It's exactly what I need, really. I say exactly. They're a little bit too um, focused. I might just sell a tape a bit of paper over there or something. But um, these are great. I'm just going to. I don't know if you can see that from here, but um, just cable tie them onto the onto the framework or something, and then they can just be positioned wherever I need them. So I've got two of those. I've yet to um, turn out those. And what else have I been doing? Checklists. I've uh, been having fun with my laminator. So I've got some checklists. So these are just the checklists from the Aerosoft documentation. I've all I've done is I've reformatted them in a Word document, printed them out, well actually I printed them A5 and then cut them down so I could use these um, 5 by 7 inch laminating pouches. So we've got pre-start, we've got fuel, cross feed and so on, boost pumps, auto feather test, anti-ice, I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera, yeah it's looking alright. Just all, all the checklists, you know, you don't really need me to go through those. Um, and then the data tables as well from the, again, the data from the Aerosoft uh, manuals. So these are just uh, handy references, really. So we're going to have those. What else? Don't think I've done anything else. That's pretty much it. Well, I've, I've been doing some more software stuff. Um, 